Hello again, guys. We had another interesting quadcopter show up at the door today, courtesy of Lytake.com. This is the Shinlin X162 follower quadcopter. A bunch of different names, as you might expect. But basically, this is a little micro. It's got this interesting little fake GPS thing on the top. So let's open it up, see what comes in the package, see how it flies. So first up, you have your instruction manual. And on here, it does show you that there's a power switch, flip button, speed control, mentions headless mode, photos, light control, one key return. Now, I don't think this one actually comes with a camera on it, but I think camera is definitely an option. And you can see there, it does take three AA batteries. Underneath the package, there's a bag full of stuff. So you got your USB charging cable, and a bag of four spare props. Here's the transmitter. It actually looks an awful lot like the one that came with my SEMA X11, although it feels a little bit thinner, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more plasticky. And then finally, you have the quadcopter itself. As you can see, it has the prop guards pre-installed. It looks like they simply come off by just removing the screw and taking the prop off and taking the prop guard off. The battery is contained inside, so we should just be able to open this up. And in here, you'll see it is a 390 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt battery. Not bad, not bad at all. I'll be curious to see how difficult it is to get everything hooked up and, and closed back up inside of there. And, and the layout of the arms is very interesting. You've got two that sort of sticks almost straight out and then two that angle back. It's almost like some of the MJX hexacopters that I've flown, except it doesn't have the extra two arms. So I'll be curious to see if that impacts the actual flight performance. But it looks like we've got the four LEDs in the arms, not a whole lot on top. So let's plug it up and see what it looks like. All right, so I got it plugged in. Let's see if I can sort of cram everything inside of here and get it closed up. Oh yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. So then on the underside, it's all red. Actually, no, it's not. It's red in the rear, and then a combination of blue and red up front. Let me get some batteries in the controller. We'll see what it looks like when it's paired up. And I will say, upon first glance, I'm a big fan of this. The fact that the, the actual door doesn't come all the way off. It may become obnoxious, but I don't think it will. You just click it back into place with the batteries. Power that on. And we are paired up. So now the light's underneath. Oh! That's interesting. Cycling between blue and red in the front and red and green in the back. Hopefully that doesn't become confusing. But for those of you that are curious about the way that it sounds, here you go. So it's not hugely loud, but it's also not hugely quiet. So at this point, I think I'll, I'll take it one time through the battery and just let it run the battery down, charge it all back up, and then we will take it outside for a flight. All right, so we are outside for the first actual flight of the Shinlin X162. Let's do this. So it is very touchy on the throttle, just a little bit of throttle, it'll absolutely take off. But here's your... Funnels are not really going to be much to happen in low rates. But there's the uh, yaw rate at low, yaw rate at medium, yaw rate at high, doesn't seem to change at all. So here's the pitch, left to right front to back, at low, medium, has a lot more pitch, medium actually has a lot of pitch in general, high, has a huge amount of pitch, look at that, just a massive amount of pitch, I think it's actually going to have a little, little much to be able to even keep itself in the air, but that thing's really cool. So yeah, the problem is that it has so much pitch that when you start start pushing it one direction or the other, the yaw isn't enough to keep up with it. But it is really, really fast. Let's see if I can do headless mode with it real quick. There we go. So here's our headless mode. Seems to be working appropriately. Put it in middle rate. That's the one thing I like about the headless mode on this, is you can use the headless mode from, oh, that was the third rate, medium rate. Yeah, but anyway, you can use the any of the rates with headless mode, which, again, headless mode is not something I use a lot, but it is nice to have as an option. We're back in medium rates. Let's do a few flips. You'll notice there, it gives itself a lot of, a lot of throttle before it does a flip. For example, I'm not touching the throttle right now at all. I took actually took and it just takes off. Yeah, it just ups its own throttle. Not a terrible thing. It just make sure if you're doing this indoors that you've got lots and lots of headroom because it's going to take itself really far up. Well, I will say this has a sturdy body on it. Don't know if I'm going to include that or not, but that was pretty decent little 
crash there. I think the biggest problem is just that this doesn't have enough yaw. It has a good amount of pitch. I mean, a ridiculous amount of pitch. Look at that. It just lays itself flat out, so much so that it can't stay in the air. Put it back in medium rates because the high rate is just too much pitch for me. But the medium rate is very, very nice. Kind of big funnels. And there's your flip. Very nice though. Medium rates, you get, it's a, it's a nice mix of a, a little bit of yaw with a decent amount of pitch. Makes it very comfortable to fly. But that high rate, the pitch on high rate is just a little bit too much for me. We'll keep an eye out on it for the, the LVC warning. Yep, it just hit LVC. And that was at 420. Oh, done. And that's all we got. We are at 445. Maybe a little less than that. But anyway, that is all for the battery on the Shinlin X162. Done a little bit of damage to it, but I guess it could be a whole lot worse. Nothing is broken. Did crash a couple of times. Not bad. Medium rates are a necessity though. High rates are a little much. Well, it is quite a bit later. I've actually flown this thing a few times since the video that you just saw, and my opinion has not changed. Haven't discovered anything new or anything like that. So I thought I'd go ahead and wrap things up. This thing has an insane amount of pitch, so much so it can actually throw itself to the ground rather than going forward, but it doesn't have enough yaw to really go along with it. So while you're able to lay flat out, you're not able to actually make the turns that you need to make to be able to keep flying. So maybe a little bit of a design error, but realistically it is still a lot of fun. I found myself spending the majority of my time in medium rates, as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, because it was just a little bit more comfortable. And for the battery life, I was regularly seeing about four and a half minutes, which is not terrible. And when you open this up, you'll see you do have a little bit of extra space in there, so it might be possible to fit a slightly larger battery in there. The 390 milliamp hour one gets the job done. You might be able to fit 400, maybe a 500, but that's gonna be a bit tight. But as I said, you do have a little bit extra space in this little back cap, so it might be possible. And really, one of the best things about this is just the price. I just checked over on lightake.com and it's available for $18.82 currently. So I'll have a link down in the video description to where you can pick one of these up if you're interested. But I think that's gonna be about all for me for today. Not a bad quadcopter, just that one little minor issue with regard to the yaw and the pitch. So remember, if you like this video, please do leave me a thumbs up below the video and subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available and we'll see you again next time.